starting to binge eat. I'm starting. It was a horrible time in my life. I'm gonna go insane soon. I don't know how people can make people feel like that. My mum was really worried about me. Okay. That noise is really annoying. Okay, I've had a lot of people asking me for this video and it's. And I'm finally gonna talk about it, finally gonna just get it off my chest. And this is my journey with Love Island. It's been a madness of a year, but I thought I would update you guys with what's happened in this year, how I got onto Love Island, what happened during Love Island, all the tea basically. I'm in Norwich at the moment, I'm on tour, so sorry about the background. And you might hear a crying baby outside because... So a year later, Love Island is starting again. Who's excited? I'm excited. So let's start at the beginning. I'm gonna try and whiz through this or it'll be like freaking two hours long, this video. Okay, so I got a message on Instagram one day in March 2018 saying we would absolutely love you to audition for Love Island. And they looked at my Instagram and was like, we think you'd be great. So they've got an audition for me on Wednesday for Love Island and I'm going. LOL. Um, at the time, I probably had about 4k followers. My Instagram wasn't popping at all. I just had a lot of dance videos, a lot of singing videos, a lot of portfolio pictures. Because, sorry, I just looked at myself in the mirror. What a freaking mess. I got that message on Instagram and I was like, that's so weird because I set this year to be a year that I wanted to experience something that I've never experienced before. Like a year of change, a year of experimenting new things. And then I get a, I get a message from freaking Love Island saying they want me to freaking audition. And I'd never, ever, ever thought of doing reality TV. Never, ever, 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 ever. So I was like, oh my God, isn't that crazy? Put it out to the universe, that comes back. <laughs> universe manifesting. Rang my mom straight away. She was like, oh my God, you should so go for it and see like where it takes you. So I was like, you know what? Absolutely, yes. Let's just freaking go for it. So I was like, okay, amazing. Like, what do I do? And they, we'd love to invite you into ITV to just have an interview with us. So I was like, okay, let's freaking do it. And at the time I was like, let's just see where the journey takes me. And if I get it, absolutely lol. I will not be taking it because it's just a journey and I want to see if I actually get it. I ended up getting all caught up in it and I started to get excited, started to get really within the journey. Yeah, and I actually started to want to get involved, you know? So like I had one audition in ITV and like loads of girls were there. I saw my friend in there actually. It was so weird. I was like, oh my God, what are you doing here? She was like, what are you doing here? One audition and I got called back to do another one and that was just me and the producers and I had to talk in front of the producers and a camera. That's when I had to go through like a medical, I had to uh, get tested for things. You have to talk to a psycho physio psychotherapist, physiotherapist, a psychotherapist. <gasps> Am I sick? You have to talk to someone to see if you're okay, if you're healthy, if you're, what do you call them? A therapist? Anyway, at this point it was all getting really real. She started asking me questions like, how will you cope with the fame? Like, and I was like, oh my God, isn't it funny how I just started this as a journey and now it's getting freaking serious. I remember when they called me to tell me that I got a place in the show. I was in my living room at home. Tia and my mum were next to me. They called me and they were like, yeah, we'd love to see you on the show. You've got a part in the show. And I, and I was like, really? And they were like, yeah. But they said that they wanted me on at the beginning, near the beginning of the series. They didn't say I was going to be an original, but they said they wanted me to be one of the first girls to be on in the series. I was excited, but kind of upset because I wanted to be one of the originals. But I was excited still because I had the opportunity to go on to Love Island. So I was still excited. I was just being a bit of a spoiled brat, really. I just wanted to be an original, but hey ho, hey ho. Told my mum, told my sister, rang my other two sisters, Ilsa and Alana, I was on FaceTime to them. And I was like, I just wanted, wanted to be an original. And they were like, so you, you're doing amazing. Like you've got onto the show. And I was like, that's true. I just need to stop being so freaking. I got all the dates. I got a packing list. I got a list of things that you need to do before you go onto the island. Like all the things that you need, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, how the hell did this get so seriously so soon? Like it just went from zero to a hundred real quick. And then suddenly I got my flights through and I was flying out to Mallorca. Flew out to Mallorca. Um, I remember the day the chaperone came to my house in Shoreditch. 
they gave me all the information, they had to check my bags and, and then there I am on the way to the airport with someone that I've just met. She was really lovely. I don't know if I'm allowed to say her name. Her name's Amelia. But we got on so well and I'm so glad I got on with the chaperone because it would have been... Uh, I'll get it down to lockdown in a minute, but it would have been an awful experience if I didn't get on with the chaperone. I don't even want to know what we've been through today. The worst day of our lives. And I'm so glad I had her because we got on so well and it was just full of laughs. Here I am going out to lockdown thinking that I was going to be there for a good six to eight weeks. So I thought I was going to be in the final in that. Obviously you've got to think that you're going to be in the final because then what's the point? What's the point in doing it if you don't think you're going to make it to the final? Huns. Where I was with a bag that was overweight thinking that I was going to be out there for the whole summer. I had to pay extra for my extra baggage because obviously a girl can't pack this gal can't pack because I always overpack things. Learn how to freaking pack Savannah. Went out into lockdown at the same time as all the other originals. So we were all in different hotels um, in Mallorca. We couldn't cross paths, we couldn't see each other, so we had to stick with our chaperone. This lockdown, I tell you now, I'm, no, I'm not allowed to say a lot about this lockdown, but I will never ever forget this experience ever. It was the craziest experience of my freaking life. No phone, no access to the outside world, no TV. You, some days you can't even leave the hotel because you you might cross paths with the other islanders. Oh, just wanna throw things. Going crazy every day because I didn't know what they were doing with me. I didn't know when I was going in. So 10 days go by, I'm still not in. Love Island have started, they're in the villa. I'm still in this hotel driving myself insane. Please imagine that feeling. We sunbathed every single day. Apart from the days that it was raining, then we had nothing to do. Me and Amelia were just going freaking crazy. In I can't believe I went through that. The producer comes to see me on the 10th day. I felt the bad news already. He was like, yeah, we're gonna send you back home. I had a free holiday, I had 10 days where I just chilled, sunbathed, no phone. It was kind of like a detox. I read a lot of books. I did a lot of yoga. That was what lockdown was. But I was very tanned. I'll tell you that for free. Wish I was tanned right now. I'm so pale. So they flew me home. I felt absolutely awful. That flight home, I felt so rubbish. I thought I was gonna go, be get on TV, but instead I'm flying home. And I was actually on the flight home with Caroline Flack. I literally remember that feeling. I was like, oh my God, I'm going home. I'm gonna have to take my bag back. I was just thinking everything negative. I wasn't thinking anything positive. I was really, 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 really upset. But I was excited to see my mom. I just had 10 days without speaking to my mom, my sisters, my dad. So I was very excited to get my phone back, speak to um, my friends didn't have a clue where I'd gone. They were like, are you okay? Like, how come you haven't been on Instagram? Where have you been? So I just had to make up some shit. I think I said my phone had broken. Uh. When I turned my phone on, it was going crazy. Like, when I tell you, it was like, buff, 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 like it was about to like crash. I had so many WhatsApp, so many Instagrams, like my phone was popping off. Like I felt so popular. Lockdown was an experience I will never ever forget. It was a once in a lifetime experience. I will never forget that shit. Wow. So I was on my way home. I was on standby. Didn't know when they were gonna call me. I remember them saying, keep your bags packed. It's not gonna be long. We're gonna call you very soon. You're gonna be back before you know it. Like, okay, kept that in my mind. I'm not gonna unpack my bags. I'm gonna be back soon. Three weeks go by. Losing hope. I am losing hope. I'm starting to binge eat. I'm starting to not exercise anymore. Like it was the worst. I was watching Love Island every night. I didn't know what to do with my life because I was meant to be on standby. I couldn't take any jobs in case they call me and be like, are you going on? It was just an absolute madness. So I spent three weeks at home doing absolutely nothing. I didn't want to leave my bed. My mum was really worried about me and it was annoying because I didn't know when I was going on and my mum just wanted to know when I was going on but I didn't know when I was going on. So she was asking me like, when are you going on? I didn't know when I was going on. The producers weren't telling me when I was going on. So it was all a lot and it was getting me down and it was all three weeks was just horrendous. I was starting to get stress spots around my freaking cheeks. I was starting to put on weight because I was binge eating because I just had like two weeks of like no no carbs and i'm thinking back to this time and i'm like oh my god what did i put myself through what did i put myself through wow so each and every day i was losing hope i was watching love island every night i was like i'm not going on i cannot imagine myself on that screen i can't imagine it i'm gonna add some clips in here okay guys so ha 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 i'm back 
just gone on a freaking holiday basically for 10 days in Mallorca waiting to be put on Love Island but I didn't got sent home we will see when I get a call to go into the villa but I'm driving myself insane I keep asking the producers like when am I going in when am I going in but they're getting so irritated by me um so I've been back at home for a week and two days and I'm gonna go insane soon. <laughs> I'm just waiting for this call, like doing nothing with my life, like not I'm Savannah, I'm 22, I'm from Sheffield and I'm a dancer. If you've got a great personality, we're sorted. Every single day I was like, when are they gonna call me? Cause I am getting upset now. So then three weeks go by, I get a call. Savannah, you're going in, get your bags packed, you are going in. I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Like, I'm ready, I've been waiting for this day. Like, obviously nothing was ready. My hair wasn't ready. My skin was just horrendous. My body had completely changed. I was binge eating for three weeks. Everything wasn't ready, but I was like, I need to get on that TV program because I'm going freaking crazy now. My hair's in the worst condition I've ever seen it. No curl there, no curl pattern to even be seen in this hair. I was not looking my best, and there I am flying out to go on national TV. So then I was I was contemplating either whether to not even go because I wasn't happy with my appearance, and my mum was like, you've been waiting this whole time to go on, you are going on. And I was like, okay. Okay, that's so true. That's true, mummy. I'll go on, I'll go on, I'll go on. So freaking went, flew out, got told I was going on as Casa Amor. Another three days of lockdown. But this time we were in a hotel with all the girls that were going in as Casa Amor. So we had to go down to breakfast at different times, lunch at different times, dinner at different times. So we were all scheduled to go down at different times so we didn't see each other. Some days they had to bring food to our rooms because it was so hard to schedule us all going down to breakfast, lunch and dinner at different times. I went crazy. I was starting to watch Disney Channel in Spanish. I went crazy. I was going crazy. I was like, just get me in that villa. Just oh, three days go by. The producer comes to the room. Yep, you've got one more day of lockdown. Sorry, we don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me. I cannot stay in lockdown. For no, no, no. No, no. And then finally, it was time to go into Castro Amor. We all get separate taxis to the villa. We, do, we don't meet the girls until we're literally walking up to the villa together. As soon as we met, we were like, okay, go, go meet the boys. What? Hope, because Castro Amor isn't the best time to go in, let's, let's, let's just face it. Um, but I just completely lost the plot by then. I was like, let's just take this opportunity now. Everything's happening for a reason. I was meant to go into Casa Amor. It's fine, let's just do it. Let's just see what happens. Boom, boom, pow, tiki tiki tow. Anyway, here we are about to walk up to the freaking villa. I am trembling. I am so nervous. I don't think I've ever been this nervous. Like my heart is beating. So the girls are walking up with these, we were trying to strut all sexily with these stones underneath us in our heels. And I'm, we're all like going over on our ankles and they're like, okay, can you try and look sexy? And I'm like, I, I actually can't try and look sexy when there's stones underneath me and I'm trying to walk on stones with heels on get to the villa I see the boys and I'm like my heart my heart drops because I'm so nervous I've been watching these boys for the past four weeks on my tv and now I'm meeting them and now I'm going to be on tv no this isn't okay I'm nervous I'm very nervous I'm shaking I'm shaking I was nervous to meet the girls I obviously was there thinking oh my god what if they're prettier than me what if they're shut up Spanner. went straight into comparing mode Compared straight away, saw the girls. I was like, why don't I have a body like that? Why don't I have hair like that? Why don't I have... I remember seeing Kaz and I was like, bloody hell, she's beautiful. She We're our worst freaking enemies, mate. Let's stop that shit. I'm so annoying. I hate when I do that. All of these emotions flying everywhere. It was just all the girls were nervous as well. We were all literally like, oh my God, I can't believe this. So the days went on. I was in Casa Amor. I kept waking up early. Couldn't sleep properly in the beds to share a bed with a boy the first night or we had to sleep outside. So it was either stay with a boy or sleep outside with all the cockroaches. Um, it was awkward because we just met the boys. So I did not know who to freaking share a bed with. 
it was awkward and I hated it and I just didn't want to like pounce myself on any of the boys like I'll stay with you what if they didn't want to stay with me like it was weird I was waking up early every morning crying every freaking five minutes I bet the boys thought I was freaking annoying um but Jack was really nice to me he was like South babe like it's fine we were like this at the beginning he made me feel really welcome anyway time went on in the villa Casa Amor things happened in the villa that you obviously didn't see I came home after five days in the villa, lol, absolute howling, screaming, um, came home, spoke to my mum, I was like, oh my god, did you see this, this, that and that and this and this and this, not naming anything, um, and she was like, no babe, didn't see any of that, so I came home, stupidly rewatched the episodes that I was on, and I was absolutely fuming at my screen time, because a lot happened in that villa that wasn't put on screen, but all my Love Island friends were going to events and doing like brand deals, and I was doing nothing because I hadn't got an agent. I wasn't hearing about these events because I haven't got an agent to tell me about these events. I was going crazy. I was getting upset. I was like, what the hell? Why haven't I got an agent? Everyone's doing these fun events. I'm not doing anything. The agent dropped me, which wasn't very nice. It was so I ended up getting an agent, a new agent, and they helped me with my Instagram work, got me to a few great events. So yeah, very thankful for that agency. Then freaking life went crazy. Life went crazy. I was experiencing premieres, I was experiencing events, I was experiencing money through Instagram, I was experiencing my career completely changing. It was a madness and it was very overwhelmed. And at that point, I should have got a therapist, should have got a life coach, should have got someone to help me through that. But I was like, no, I'm fine. I'm going to get through it myself. No, Savannah, you need therapy. You need help. I think I was experiencing depression for the first time, crying every single day, um, didn't know how to cope with life. It completely changed. And I was like, I don't know how to cope with this, but I'm gonna pretend that I'm completely fine to everyone. Um, so yeah, on top of all of that, I was reading comments every single day about my freaking hair, my appearance. I remember some horrible comments saying that I was the ugliest islander ever, and that I should get breast cancer and die. That wasn't very nice. That was a horrible time in my life. It, it was just horrendous. I don't know how people can make people feel like that. Obviously people have their opinions, but some people are horrendous with their comments and I don't know how strangers can think they know someone well enough to comment on things like that. It's, it's horrible, it's really horrible. And that wasn't a nice time in my life. I remember one, one night I couldn't sleep and it was like 2 a.m. and for some stupid reason I hashtagged my name on Twitter and I really wish I didn't do that. It was horrible. And I wouldn't wish that upon anybody. My skin started to get really bad because I was stressed every day. So yeah, it was a madness of an experience. I, I wouldn't have changed it for the world. It was amazing, but it was crazy. Um, and just good luck to everyone out there that's going through that experience as well. Because it's mad. It's mad. But I just wanted to share my experience with you because I feel like a lot of people ask. And I probably shouldn't have said a lot of things in here, but... Just one thing for everyone, just always be kind. Like, you don't have a clue what people are going through. Like, you don't know what they've been through, you don't know what they're going through. Just always be kind and stop being so judgy. So, just one thing, that's the quote of the day. Just be kind. You don't know what people are going through, so just stop being so critical and stop being a freaking troll. Oh, probably more to be said, but I don't want to be rambling on for hours and hours but hope you've enjoyed the video i hope you enjoy this year's love island it's going to be absolutely fab i will definitely be watching it comment below what you want to see more of and subscribe give it a look oh. subscribe give it a thumbs up love you guys i'm savannah you are you